So uh, what do you say? You ready to get into it? I'm ready. I don't really want to waste a whole lot of time. Let me go ahead and bring him in. You want to do an introduction while I'm uh, bringing him in here? Yes. So um, we've had some pretty amazing guests on the show for the past several. I mean, every show has been phenomenal as far as our guest uh, compilation is concerned. And uh, certainly tonight is no exception. This time we're going halfway around the world. And uh, it is just after three o'clock in the morning. We've gotten him out of bed, although for him, this is normal. Uh, <laughs> please welcome uh, from Akban. This is Yossi Sheriff. How are you, sir? Uh, doing fine and running multiple streams because my students are asking what's with the live feed. And I'm saying, just go to your Facebook page and right. it's there. Yeah. So uh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, good, that's the best good, way to go. Good, good evening to you, I think. Good evening. Yeah. <laughs> as, as evening. Yes, sir. Not as late in the evening as it is for you. So I really appreciate you getting out of bed to uh to chat with us what time is it there uh it's actually three three o'clock in the middle of the night uh 3 a.m uh in israel but uh like like i told you i think it's one of the good uh, things that the army has left me with the ability to wake up and then go back to sleep <laughs> and the ability to fall asleep anywhere anywhere so, at, at, at any time so Everything is cool, and after we finish talking, uh, I'll just go to sleep again. Right back. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Well, you know, if, if you're watching and you're familiar with uh, the word Akban, uh, Yossi has created this uh, pretty amazing organization where he and uh, his senior students have been documenting these, um, I'm just going to call them for the sake of the conversation, and we'll let it expand from there the historical classical uh, kata that is associated with ninjutsu, uh, you've been documenting this. So if you are ever online and you are, let's say you're inclined to look up a technique and you, you know, did a Google search for it, chances are more than likely you're going to come across an Akban video of a breakdown of the way that Yossi interprets this technique. And I think based on our conversation earlier, Yossi, it's important to say that it's your interpretation of it because you yourself have had a pretty interesting upbringing in ninjutsu, which we would love to get into. If you would talk to us about, you know, was this your first martial art? Give us a little bit of history of yourself and the martial arts and how you came to be a student of uh, Doron Navons, please. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start chronologically, but do it fast because it's always boring to hear. Uh, I... I, uh, my friend was learning judo uh, with Doron Avon because Doron Avon is a fourth dan Kodokan judo uh, player and he was a member of the Israeli Olympic team so he's, he's a proficient judoka and uh, I heard of him that he teaches ninjutsu and when I was 13, 13 and a half I joined uh, uh, his dojo and uh, I, I mainly did ninjutsu uh, once Doron had uh, uh, the the habit of not giving anyone a black belt unless he does another system, so Doron sent me to do Muay Thai, which I loved, mm. uh, and and continued doing even after I didn't have to. Okay, but most of the black belts in Doron's group, Doron sent them to do another martial art. Uh, so this was a strong Israeli group that Doron gathered. Uh, so yeah, I, I started doing Nijitsu and then did Muay Thai and then really did everything, which is like uh, Krav Maga and, and Judo uh, and later on in Akban's time, uh, BJJ also lived in Macau for half a year and did started doing the uh, internal martial arts there. So really everything, but I, I don't teach any of these things. I just enjoy them and uh, they enriched my practice, but I teach ninjutsu. And uh, so yeah, the ninjutsu I learned from the room and uh, yeah. Okay, so this is a fast answer of what has been happening <laughs> to me. And uh, I think I've been learning ninjutsu for more than 40 years of, of usually a daily training uh, session usually even when i was in the army i always managed 
to do a, a minute or two minutes a day. Uh, and, and yes, I've been teaching, I think, 37 years. Wow. So, yeah, it's like every, every day. I, I, I train, I teach every day, every day. So, How long uh, were you in the Israeli army? Everybody has to do a three-year three, three year, uh, course. And uh, I was in the army and I was unfortunate enough uh, to participate in the first Lebanon war. And I was oh, wow. very young there. And uh, even though I did many things in the army, at, at the end of uh, this war, I became a combat paramedic. And it was, uh, it, it left a big mark on me and influenced many, many things. And I think it made me a softer person and a more understanding person. And I understood what are the limits of my martial art immediately. At the first time I got shot at and I had to do something with it. I understood what are the limits of a tsuki punch, okay? It's just a tsuki punch. And uh, I think it is very good that it gave me this perspective. Uh, so maybe that's a long answer for how long I was in the army. I think some parts of me are still in the army. And, and again, I'm close to 60 years old. So that's a long time ago. And I still carry these experiences with me. Most of them, I would give up easily, but I cannot, okay? Sure, Some, sure. some rough times, yeah. So with the different martial arts that you studied, and, and it sounds like you studied quite a bit, why do you think you ended up staying with ninjutsu? What, what is it about ninjutsu that keeps you involved having so much exposure to these other uh, very popular styles of martial arts? I'm smiling. You know why? Because of <laughs> one of one of the singers I really like the most because of many reasons, which is Johnny Cash. And Johnny Cash has a, a, a song that's the, the theme of is a boy named Sue. Okay. The father called the boy Sue, which is maybe a pig, okay, just to make the boy's life hard. And this is what happened to me, because you cannot imagine how many times people, because Akban, it's a brand, okay? And, and it's only in YouTube, we have 25 million views. And on all the platforms together, I counted it before this meeting, just to understand what is happening with the GIFs and everything. It's like 67 million views, okay? Wow. So people ask me, why do you, a uh, four-letter word, F yourself <laughs> by belonging to ninjutsu? Because some people think that ninjutsu is a hoax or, 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 or fraud or something like this. And I said, this is a Johnny Cash thing, okay? That's my family name. That's the family name I grew up into. And let's, let's redeem, and I'm saying let's, the three of us, or maybe all the people that are watching, let's redeem this family name, okay? Because yes, yeah, some people that are maybe not the best practitioners really outputted a lot of resources, okay? So that's not good, but we have a lot of fantastic practitioners in Bujinka, and I can name people, okay? Because I'm, I'm not competing with Bujinka. I am the custodian, the guardian, of, of Bujinkan syllabus. One perspective, not all the perspectives, one perspective, and I say to all people, I will give you my knowledge, my software knowledge, everything that I know how to make a semantic wiki because it's a logical wiki, just to redeem the name of our ninjutsu, okay? So of course, yes, ninjutsu is blessed with the fantastic headmasters, but he's like, I, I don't understand a lot of the things he does technically. You understand? It's such a high level. We need some translation. And the translation is guys like me. I'm just an instructor, a, a third generation instructor. My, stu my teacher, Doron Avon, was Hatsumi's personal student. He was the first non-Japanese uh, Shidoshi in Japan. Doron Avon and Danny Waxman were. And uh, so I'm... I'm I'm third tier, okay, below Hatsumi. And, and people need our translation. 
and there are many, many perspectives, and, and this is what I do. Okay, so uh, I think this is extremely important. Yeah, that yeah, I know a lot of systems, and I did a lot of good things with these systems. But hey, my family name is Sue. Yeah, and uh, or my personal name is Sue. You you understand? Okay, so I yeah, do. Thank you, John. Thank you, Johnny Cash. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny Cash. <laughs> that's that's, that's great. What a great answer. With uh, with with ninjutsu and all the other styles that you've trained, right? You you're, you're talking about you know holding ninjutsu up, you know, and, and showing the world what it is and what it can be. Have you pulled any of the training methodologies from your judo, from your muay thai, from your jujitsu? I see some akpan videos where guys are sparring and they're warming up, and that's not something you see in every ninjutsu doji. Okay. So I want to unpack your questions. Yeah. First of all. When Doron Avon went to Japan and came back, there was sparring in each and every Hatsumi session. That's it. Okay, so, so that's the first thing. Uh, sparring inside uh, ninjutsu lessons was a regular and daily thing in all of Doron's group. And in Japan, you can look at the first Budo Taijutsu book of Hatsumi. He is working there with boxing gloves. He wears a kendo a do, okay, yep. just for punching purposes. So everything was uh, sparring oriented, even in jiu-jitsu. At some time, Hatsumi advanced, okay? Uh, I call it Hatsumi advanced. For me, when I was 45, many years ago, I stopped doing uh, randori, because, not because I advanced, because I got old. Okay, <laughs> and, but it just just got old. But uh, uh, so so that's the first thing. And then mm. I want to answer what you said about methodology. Mm. Uh, I'm a board certified physical therapist, and in Israel there is a licensing uh, thing that concerns everything physical, yoga instructors and martial mm. artists, and. I did the whole four tiers of this licensing, and I'm a, a national martial art teacher. Okay, so that's 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 the level. It says nothing. Okay, it's just I had enough patience to go through all this uh, <laughs> stuff, and uh, I don't use other systems methodology because we we I mean at least the three of us, because I don't know how many people will be watching this in the future, have a unique problem in ninjutsu, which is also a unique opportunity. And what is the problem? We have a lot of ancient DNA. It's just like the Jurassic Park. A ninjutsu kata is a DNA of a dinosaur. It is not a dinosaur. To make this dinosaur live again, some intervention, and I say a scientific intervention, is needed. And this is what I learn, and this is what I teach. I try to take this ancient DNA and make it alive again in our life. And there are many uh, problems, hindrance, okay, to this process. First problem is, you know, I'm, I'm just... Uh, a nice Jewish guy. So, okay, maybe not so nice, okay? But I'm, and I don't have the, the genetics. I don't have the mindset. I don't have the body of somebody who, who grew up in Japan 500 years ago. So that's the first thing, okay? It's not the same genetics, not the same body, and it's detrimental to me. And then there are things that I encounter that this Japanese guy 500 years ago never encountered. First of all, the amount of vari variability in martial art, the power multipliers, and I use this word a lot, which is weapons, the power multipliers that rule everything, uh, that's something new. And we have to integrate this new into the old just to make the DNA alive again. Okay, so of course, I tried, maybe I succeeded, to develop a training methodology. I called it the methodical pyramid. 
and everybody in Akban, all the instructors in Akban learn this methodology, of course. There is no business model. Everything is online for free. You just Google the methodical pyramid Akban, you get the methodical pyramid Akban. I wrote it when I was younger, like in 1991 or something like this, okay? And this is how we integrate the new into the old and just, I don't know, resuscitate these dynamics dinosaurs because some of these dinosaurs are fantastic okay some mm. of the cuttings of ninjutsu just are a, a treasure house of, of combat knowledge but you have to put in the work okay so maybe that's a long question about methodology but we got into good places with really, it okay because I, I, no I, it's a great it's a great um it's a great topic to discuss because you know as you know as uh, mr hayes followed, this is my interpretation of what I've learned based on the history that I know and how I see it has come to be important, you know, in our current um, culture. And that he basically, I don't want to say did the same thing, but he too was, was looking at how do we take these principles from the past and apply them to what we would experience on an everyday Western culturalized stress-induced situation, whether it be physical or non-physical. And I agree with you that the, this, you know, this historical ninjutsu is a dinosaur. And while it is awesome to, to watch and see how this dinosaur moved, we can't help but to think to ourselves, how is this applicable to me now? And I think that's what uh, Mr. Hayes and your, yourself have done you know, a really good job at interpreting and trying to flush out what the uh, important pieces are while still respecting, you know, as you put it, the dinosaur. So, you know, kudos, kudos to you and the, the efforts that you've put in because they've certainly gone a long way. And it's good to have these types of conversations with someone, uh, you know, has had a history like you've had because there are a lot of new practitioners I'm sure in both, you know, the Akban system or the methodology of Akban and Toshindo to where new students only see it a certain way without having known how it got to be this, you know, current day and age way of looking at uh, physical self-defense. I tell you one problem, uh, at least there are many, many problems. Some of the kata were preserved and transferred through the generations just written you, you understand how dangerous mm -hmm. that is that is actually a dna okay that's there was there were no video files okay so it's just written and you look at the uh, scrolls okay of Kotoriu, and you see a painting somebody does hoku no kamai like this okay so and, and you read the japanese and it says lift both your arms to do hoku no kamai so Okay, Hatsumi and Kanemura Sensei and Manaka Sensei and all the systems coming from in the Takamatsu there, they do the Hoko no Kamai like this. But you see the scroll, it's like this. So how should we do Hoko no Kamai? Hmm, that's a problem because the Tangeki no Kata, okay, is a, pivot, a, a really, really important kata. Uh, and how, how do you do it? Because if you do like this, well, it's like Hoko no Kamai is Muay Thai, okay? And if you do like this, then Hoko no Kamai is something really strange. How do you understand it? And there is a lot of trial and error here, okay? Uh, and uh, I welcome it in my practice, this trial and error, okay? How do you actually do a Jordan UK? What are the Kyusho that you... We have to research it. And we did a lot of research on a lot of small things, okay? Because they interest us so much. So the Q show, what are the Q shows? So I used my uh, medical background uh, to really redraw again the map of the pressure points and take out of the maps everything that says energy points, okay? and live inside only things that I said, okay, anatomically, I know why this is a pressure point. And we did it with many things. And I tell you uh, one thing, Scott, 
some of the kata, uh, after researching a lot, are look now to me, my students will correct me in few generations, pretty stupid, you understand? So even <laughs> after we resuscitated this DNA, we look at some of the katas and say, well, this is not the best kata there is. And I just want you to, to understand the numbers, more than 400 katas with some of them with 10 registered variations. We have been documenting so far in 1500 videos, uh, about 11,000 techniques. N not all of them are kata. Some of them are uh, fragments of kata. And we only encompassed one third of the Takamatsu Den syllabus. Okay, so I will not finish it in my lifetime. Uh, this project of documenting Takamatsu Den Kata. But uh, I don't mind because I, I really like the process. But sure. we are two thirds far distance, okay, from documenting Takamatsu Den Kata. Two thirds. We, we have two thirds to go. <laughs> so everybody, <laughs> everybody must join and do and, and give their perspectives, okay? And, and, and not do the same thing again because there are so many interpretations to how to do the shikan can. Okay, and I see video, should the finger be like this and like this? Yeah, it's it's important, but not but not too important. Let's take shio kaze no kata, okay? Let's take an obscure kata and really research it and understand why did people years ago thought it's so important that they are gonna write it down and teach it to their students. They were not stupid people. Why did they do it? Let's let's understand. And it's part archaeology, part Indiana Jones, part mystical mystery tour. Okay, it's 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 fantastic. And we, at least three of us that are talking to each other, we're the custodian of this fantastic system. Mm -hmm. And what Stephen Hayes did for the ninjutsu, I think Scott is much bigger than what you just described. Because if it weren't for Stephen Hayes and the book that really ignited Menachem Golan, his movie director, who directed the first ninja, American ninja movies, then Hatsumi would have now 100 students instead of 100,000 students, okay? And maybe I would not be learning ninjutsu because I wouldn't know about ninjutsu. So Stephen Hayes, just opened the gate and pointed his very important finger on Hatsumi's figure and told everybody, look, this is something unbelievable. This guy is like a god of fighting, okay? And uh, Stephen Hayes did it, and he was the first to do it. And there was a gap of many years, and then everybody caught on to, to this idea that there is something here worth learning. With regards to all the, the variations that you could show of the, the tons of techniques that you have, how did you decide on what you were going to put out there? How, what was the, the source? Was it through your personal, like, diving into doing the research? Or did you, do you have, like, variations from certain teachers that, that you go to? Because now there's different soke for the different you recently. Okay, so uh, now it gets technical. Okay, at the beginning, Duran thought, teached a version of ninjutsu. That is the version of ninjutsu he learned in Japan. And Hatsumi uh, created an amalgam of some things in Kotoryu, some things in Kokishin Ryu, Gyokuryu, okay? So, of course, Gogi Ono Kata, okay, and all these katas that are, that emphasize some style. And this is what we did, which is a very, a frugal and a thin, okay, and very uh, concise ninjutsu. It's not too big, not, not all the kata are in it. And this is what Doron pitched. And, and it was good because ninjutsu has a problem. It's too big, okay? It's like the system is too big. So after doing this at the beginning years, I got hungry. I am, by the way, always hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry like a wolf. I became hungry and I started researching 
with Manaka's help, other kata that only Manaka documented. And I'm saying this again because I know all the videos, only Manaka was busy documenting these katas. And mm -hmm. I look at Manaka's interpretation and I was into, first of all, deep respect for Manaka and, and his students, okay? Because he created, I think with Hatsumi's permission, his own school and really dedicated himself to teaching and documenting. And then I became hungry and I looked, uh, and I'm answering your question, Hardy. Uh, I looked at a, a kata that really interested me and I said, oh boy, this is really effed up kata. The way Manaka does it makes absolutely no sense to me. Nobody attacks, boom, boom, boom. Nobody attacks. So why is this happening? And, and it was just like a, a riddle, okay? A, a challenge, a mental, a, a intellectual challenge. And uh, this is the way we just skipped from kata to kata, understand what this kata does, under what, what's the premise that makes this, why, let's say, uh, let's look at all the basic sabaki level of Kukishinden Ryu, okay? Again, very technical for those of you that know what I'm talking about. Kukishinden Ryu is a system of, Samurai, maybe pirates that got integrated into Bujinkan. It probably has very little to do with ninjutsu, but it's sort of taijutsu and also weapon jutsu system. And it's uh, it's levels, okay? First level, sabaki, okay, okuden level. So why in Kukishin you stand like this and you do boom, 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 and then somebody, I don't remember if it was me or one of my students said, okay, this is a system of samurai and they were wearing a yoroi, uh, okay? How much does a yoroi weight? And we started wearing things just that weights, weighs like yoroi. And then we understood that if you put on yourself a 20 pounds, 30 pounds, of even light armor with the clothes and everything, then you have to do boom, boom, because you cannot rotate the waist and do punch, punch, punch. You cannot do it because you're wearing a battle armor. And then what we did, because we're Israelis and we don't have the money to buy all Japanese Yoroi, we put on a ceramic anti-bullet vests and you can find online videos of us doing a colloquium, which is a meeting of all the instructors wearing a ceramic vest. And then you understand why Kukishin Ryu does all the kata, okay? And it took us in the kind, in the place of Kukishin three years. And again, this is just my perspective. Maybe I'm wrong. So I'm so interested to, to say it as, as a, a wish. I wish to see other people's interpretations of these dinosaurs, okay? Because I think they mean something and I learned uh, prag pragmatic, uh, real combat skills with it, okay? But is my interpretation the only one? I hope not. Okay. <laughs> yours, yours has been uh, put out there so broadly that you, you're certainly seen as one of the main uh, sources of knowledge. Do you, do you have a favorite sort of video or set of videos that you've put out? And, and is there like a fan favorite? Is there one that click and keep liking or comment is there something that's collected or, or caught the most attention okay so the way it works is like this i have a, i have several favorites mm -hmm. my favorites are not the favorites of the crowd why it's all about search words mm -hmm. okay and what do i mean search words i once had a video that is called the interpretation of Fudori Kata concerning Kansetuvaza and Nagewaza in the middle level uh, strata. Okay, so this was like a name. Okay, and I put it online, and it was online, and this is a nice story, Scott. It was online for four months, and three thousand people were interested in the interpretation of the kata of the Nagawaza and Kansetubaza. Nobody looked at it actually, 3,000 people. And then I changed the name. 
and I called it uh, Ninjutsu Techniques Against MMA and Judo. So I, suddenly, I watched that one. <laughs> suddenly, the same, by the way, and if you listen carefully, I, I don't say anything about MMA or Judo because it's Fudori Ukata. But of course, Fudori understood that if somebody wants to throw you, you can use the can, which is hitting, okay, to do Kuzushi, okay, put him out of balance. So I did not lie, but in the original video, I did not care about MMA. I don't care about MMA. It's not interesting. Okay, so I just changed the name. Million views. Million <laughs> views. Okay? So that, that's the answer. Okay? Because people that are drawn to these things are drawn via algorithm. Okay? And I don't care about this algorithm. Okay? If I would care, I would have... 10 times the number of views on my yeah. channel because most of my videos are called Shiokaze no Kata, Okuden Level, Takagi Oshin Ryu, which, which is not a popular search word. Okay. <laughs> um, if, right. So if you ask about my favorite, my favorite video is a video concerning the inner essence, the, the reason why ninjutsu kamae are connected to ninjutsu hand positions and why they are so important in our modern world. And the story behind this Kuji in Kuji Kiri video, which actually does not teach Kuji Kiri, but the reason behind it is that I was recording in Athens and I got angry at my teachers that were there, they didn't understand why, why, why I'm doing something. I said, okay, stop, I'm gonna tell you. And this telling with, was not with, without teleprompter, I didn't rehearse it or anything, I just talked for 15 minutes and it's the best explanation to what I do. So this is my favorite video, but of course, nobody searches for Kuji in for soldiers and Commanders under stressful situation. It's not a popular search term. Uh, maybe if I would call it the Kardashian answer to tough times, <laughs> then I would have. Like, then you've got a hit, man. You got a hit there. But, but this is go. the way it works. Okay. The algorithm yeah, is true, not so uh, insightful. Yeah. What, what about your, your personal passion for your training and, and for your dojos, right? Like you've got this broad set of stuff you're documenting and you know there's there's hundreds and hundreds of kata in the takamatsu den but if if your you know your your family your cousin your nephew or something had a few months to train with you a few years to train with you and you could only download what you thought was real important and real applicable um yeah we have the, we have this uh and, and the answer is very simple because i had to use it not only say it for many times first of all Learn to fall. If you want to stand and have good balance, do not be afraid of falling. And not being afraid is not here. It's here. The body must not be afraid of falling. Then learn how to contact somebody. Somebody should bump into you. Not very hard. Just learn because if you don't do it, the shock and surprise of clashing with somebody would immediately put you into a 3F reaction, fight, flight, freeze. And we don't want this automatic reaction. We want a very high level, speedy, instinctual uh, reaction. So just learn the feeling when somebody claps with you. And then, just a minute, my uh, earphones stopped working and I'm just checking to see if I hear you like this. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. we hear you great. Okay. So yep. that's that's the Mac microphone. Sorry for that. Uh, so first of all, rolling, then learning, just understanding the impact, and then doing sabaki, and then just maybe three or four punches. Punch straight, okay? Punch from the side. Learn to do push kick. I really like the ninjutsu push kick. Okay, so kugiaku giri. I really like it because I think it is so versatile and it doesn't try to do something 
like uh, kicking in the head and almost everybody can learn it in, in two or three months. And that's it, that's enough. Tai Sabaki, falling, learning how to clash, two or three punches, that's it. And if you look at one of the reasons, and it's not the only reason, one of the reasons classical boxing is so good, is such a sweet science, because it uses not many ingredients to make to make something magical okay so not many ingredients you can make fantastic stew okay fantastic cookie <laughs> okay and then if you're interested and you want to really explore because it is so interesting this system look this is a a treasure okay that we all have we're the custodian of the then you go and and continue to train and i think and now i'm i'm extending my answer into a really I think it is very beneficial that in my ninjitsu, and again, I'm almost 60 years old, I'm learning something new all the time. It's unbelievable. I'm just going into the third level of Takagi Oshin Ryu, and I cannot do the kata. I have to learn it. Where is it in the 21st century that a person above the age of 16 learns new way to move? only in ninjutsu we don't mm. redigest the same five or six movements which is good fantastic no we are again and again and again challenged by new ways of moving of locomotion okay and it's only in ninjutsu so it's a problem because there the horizon is never there you go and you understand suddenly i go i understand suddenly that i don't know enough Sure. But then you look at my group, everybody in Akban is an entrepreneur. We're just like the Y Combinator. And why is it? Why so many successful people are in Akban group? Because of this mindset. I keep learning all the time. My students, after learning for 10 years, come to the training session. And now we started doing long stick and naginata. And everything is new. They just start from the beginning. Not many people have a stomach for this, okay? Sure. I want to, after 10 years, feel like I control the whole field. And I never get this feeling in ninjutsu. So I always feel like I just discovered something and I'm six years old, okay? So I don't know if this answered your question, Hardy, but... Uh, but it allowed me to keep my own practice with joy because I practice every day, every day religiously. And there are many reasons for it, but one of the, and the Duracell batteries in it is because it is so interesting to do these new things, to discover new things, okay? And again, Akban is, uh, an organization of very, very problematic guys like me. I attracted guys like me. And if I would <laughs> not have been training every day and honing my technique, my students would sniff it in no time and eat me up like a pack of wolves. So this whole balance is founded upon the fact that I train more than my students all the time. And when the day comes, and it will come, that I will be weaker and older, I will say to my students, I'm lending you my experience and my farewell wishes. I'm out of this because after all, Akban Ninjitsu is very tough place. And there is no place in it actively to a person who cannot do the work. And someday will come that I will not be able to do the work and I will just be maybe a beneficial figure. But somebody else from Akban will be the next headmaster. And it's a good way to think about it because I will not be strong forever. <laughs> well, I, I think the, the maturity in your uh, practice was really clearly expressed just with that excitement about constantly learning new stuff. You can, you can tell what stage uh, somebody is in the training by where, what piques their interest. And the, uh, 
the fact that you've got that curiosity that continues to drive you is, is what I, I believe put you in the position that you're in, that you have this, uh, you know, the group that you have. Now tell us a little bit about the group. Tell us about Akban. I know you've got the group in Israel, but I believe you have uh, uh, in Greece as well. Is that correct? Uh, we have in Israel uh, about 12 groups. Okay. Every group is led by an instructor. If you Google up black belts, Akban, it's even more in Hebrew because in English, I did not uh, updated everybody. Then you see about 120 black belts. Some of them are not training anymore because they, they had enough, they ate enough and they continued with, with my farewell. It's important thing to, to, to release a student that is old and mature enough, okay? So, but out of these people, uh, I've got about 20 instructors that chose this as the thing that they are doing now. Each one of them has been training at least 15 years, okay? The instructors uh, in uh, Greece, Aris and Vasilis, have been training for many years, also in Bujin Khan. I'm very, very happy for this. And I've got a group in Berlin and one instructor that is not, hey, Daniel, what's the matter with you? I'm just talking to you. Open up the group in France, okay? Uh, we started the best fantastic collaboration with the Bujin Khan Dojo in Madrid, Spain, and I was in Spain. Everything is very, very slow because there is no business model behind it. We have a group in Toronto, and uh, soon we will have a group in Chandigarh, which is in India, Punjab, okay? Because I have a fantastic student there. Uh, so everything is very, very slow, okay? Because if somebody wants to train and be an instructor with Akban, usually I get at least before the corona, before the COVID, uh, once a week, a mail, how much should I pay you to be an Akban instructor? And I said, nothing. You just come to Israel or invite me to your group. And if you don't have a group, then I cannot help you because I, you can learn in Zoom. We, we have Zoom, but you have to, to experience it. And then like the Greek instructors, they invite me and I come and I start teach. And not a lot of money passes from hand to hand because there is not a lot of money in, in our tiny branch of ninjutsu. That, that's it. The margin is very small and there is not a lot of money. And it's actually good because calculating the, the low margin has forced me to do everything out there for free. So all the videos, all the images, all what I wrote are under Creative Commons. Please do not use them commercially and mention where you got them from, but do whatever you want from them, with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it helped me not to expand a lot, but to expand during 20 or 30 years very, very slowly, but feeling such a deep faith and love for my instructors, because look, uh, I know these instructors at least for 20 years. Many of my students, where you go into the black belt page, many of my students have been with me together for 30 years. So mm. this is the best ecosystem there is. You know, it's just, I come to the dojo, I don't know, I just, it expands my heart, okay? Because these are the same students that have been learning with me, okay, for so many years, and now they are teachers. Some of them are better than me, for sure, for sure, because, because they, they got a better starting point. They got better genetics, and, and, uh, and everything is good, okay? So let's please continue this small and tiny organization that is really interested in reconstitution of dinosaurs, okay, trying to integrate modern warfare techniques, even handguns, into ninjutsu way of thinking, and do it in a very beneficial and not political uh, system and environment. 
Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe that's a long answer for that's a good, good question. Yeah. That's that's why we have you on, yeah. <laughs> so we could hear your great uh, long answers to short questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's you know, good, you were saying yeah. that some, you know, your students they've grown up, you know, with you. They've tr been training since they were very, very young. And um, I noticed something that was really interesting from our perspective as martial artists. Um, you know, for someone in the Akban methodology to receive a first degree black belt, there's anywhere between 10 to 13 years of training that goes into that. Um, did that organically develop or did you have in your in your mind as this was kind of evolving that you wanted your students to have a certain um, skill or acquisition of knowledge phase that ended up being that long? How did that develop to that amount of time? It, it did not develop because I was wise. It developed because I was vain <laughs> and stupid <laughs> and greedy. I'm serious here. It's very important. I was vain because I was thinking right then that I want my students to be the best in the world, as if sure. there is such a thing as the <laughs> best in the world, okay? And I was greedy because I was starting to assemble the Akban Wiki. And I was greedy to get as many techniques into the Shodan level, okay? So mm -hmm. let's teach all the Kyushu and let's teach all the basic levels of Kuki Shinden Ryu, Takagi Yoshin Ryu, Fudo Ryu. Let's bring everything, okay? It's just like a hoarder's house, okay? And you <laughs> cannot walk in the house because there's so many techniques. Just to do the black belt techniques is three hours without any repetition, just one technique. Okay, let's go on to the next one. It's three hours. Okay, so it's a boring technique for me as an instructor, just just to see it in the test. It's just like, it's a boring, okay? And, 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 and right now I'm stuck with it because if I will say to my students, and I said it many times, and you know, we have a think tank that we think about many, many problems from modern warf warfare uh, through COVID-19 uh, uh, till the least important kata. I said to them, okay, this stops Akban. 13 years for a black belt is, is not rational. Let's cut it down into three years, okay? Less techniques and put the techniques, the many techniques into Nidan, Sandan, Yondan, okay? But let's create instructors faster. And they said, no. And <laughs> this shows. Well, that's because the, they were already in the club. <laughs> they they were already established. They didn't want to. They wanted to make it. Well, it sounds like anyway, they want to make the, everyone else have to follow that path. But, but there is a beauty in it. Okay. And the beauty is uh, a relative, a family relative was learning. Okay. And he studied from young age until he was 18. He learned for 12 years. And when he reached 18, he was an orange belt. Why? Because he never got into the level of being tested into a green belt. And he really practiced. So I don't know if I did a mistake, a family relative after all, but he never got the green belt and he stopped training. And we lost a stellar human being that could be a good instructor just because I was vain and greedy and stupid, okay? Right now, uh, probably I'm a little bit stupid, okay? But I cannot convince the other instructors, okay? Because it's just like, it's in stone, okay? Akban, mm. you do 12 years to a black belt, okay? Some exceptions, somebody, I had some students who were just like, I don't know, superstars. And they got black belt much faster, but you know, everything is recorded in video. These students are superstars. Most guys, me included, it's just like 10 years to do a black belt. Okay, that's a long time. That's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu time. That's a long time. Uh, and that's not good. I'm saying to you instructors, have a high level of technical ability, but don't bring somebody into teaching after 10 to 12 years. Why? By 10 to 12 years, he has a wife, a mortgage, two kids, maybe a lover, he will not be teaching ninjutsu, okay? <laughs> you want him before he got married, got mortgage and everything, before, before. So don't do the Akban mistake. 
I have to ask you about, uh, you, you mentioned COVID, but um, right in the very beginning of the uh, pandemic starting, I saw a video or, uh, or maybe read a post, I can't remember, about it some predictions that you made about it that um, are, are coming out to be um, spookily true. For, I don't know if spookily is a word, but... Uh, but uh, It is now. It is, it is now. Uh, could you kind of reiterate what you were saying in that video and what you think the landscape of uh, martial arts is going to evolve or is evolving into right now? First of all, uh, we, we knew, we had in the Akban Think Tank, which is a group of veterans that are, I'm not kidding, I'm not modest, way smarter than me, okay? Uh, in the Akban Think Tank, we had a, an argument and, uh, and I won, okay? From the end of December, I knew that it's going to be a world cataclysm. Okay, so so we had a, a good a good start. Okay, and, and it helped us. And what I say that will happen in the future. And again, we have some arguments. So this is only my perspective. It might not be true. I say that societies react to anomalies, to sudden changes the same way an individual reacts to an anomaly. And the reaction is a gut reaction. It's either fight or flight or freeze. So you see different societies reacting differently. If I may say so, with a lot of respect, United States reacted just like Israel, but even more with freeze. Froze. First thing, there was freeze. No compute what is happening. No, it's not Agreed. happening. Everything is okay. It's a flu. It's a, a, some conspiracy. Okay. Okay. So it's not a flu. It's something else. Okay. But the first reaction was freeze. I'm not talking about the facts. I'm talking about the cultural reaction. And then always societies go into flight, which is mental disorders of many, many kinds on the spectrum from depression to really paranoia, okay? And then fight. So this is what we predict in the five next years. A lot of fights inside societies and between societies, okay? And uh, I hope what I said before, that I'm stupid, that this prediction is not accurate, but analyzing many, many things, we think it is accurate, and it matters a lot, both in our practice, how do I wake up and what do I do every morning, and it matters a lot because our martial art has a practical side, okay? It's not just, let's discover what's in this level of kata. It has a practical side. It helped me stay alive, help me deal with conflicts, physical conflicts, okay? So how am I preparing? How are we as instructors preparing people for what is going to become both mentally, okay? Because the mental uh, crisis is so big. I just read a CDC uh, uh, research yesterday that says that about one fourth of adults in the States between the age of 18 to 24 considered suicide in the last half year. So this is a shocking, how, how do we prepare our students for this? How do we prepare our students to be humane in the middle of strife, war, civil strife? How do we make, I really like Jack Hoban's project. Jack Hoban is one of the founding fathers of American ninjutsu, a fantastic guitar player. He will never hear this, so I can say whatever I want about him. <laughs> a fantastic guitar player, okay? And he created, uh, he's a Marine officer, and he created the Ethical Warrior Program. This is what I like. And he created it way, way before the civil strife that we are seeing now. Okay, so this is the direction that the Akban think tank goes in, okay? We're not developing the next stun guns, okay? Star Wars weapons, no. We are developing the human being that has to face all this calamity, okay? Because 2020 is not over. 
it's just the beginning okay mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's my perspective again it's not it's not that it's going to happen i hope i'm wrong well i think that you know along the lines of what you were talking about i think culturally from a um a country's perspective i i think you're you're spot on with what you were saying and that we're still in this kind of freeze and we're kind of also in this fight mode and while i think it will it will go on right it won't just disappear overnight not just the disease itself but the way that we are responding to it is going to go on for years it's literally changing how we interact with one another but you know just because we uh, describe something as a response that necessarily doesn't mean that it's a disparaging thing for the entire country. It just means this is something to be aware of how you manage it, which I, I think is such an amazing thing to kind of piggyback on what you were saying is an amazing thing about the martial art that we study is that if you look past all the physicality of it, all the lessons that you need to be able to deal with these things that are culturally going on, that are affecting how we live our daily lives, both physically and mentally, they're, all the lessons are there. You just have to pay attention to them or have somebody help you pay attention to them. But I also feel like uh, while we're in this position, we are also capable of managing it and being okay through it all. Um, do you see that kind of where you are as well with you, the way that you're approaching the training yourself? I'm not sure. And I, I'm interested at, I'm not sure I understood uh, your last sentences. And what, what did you actually mean about the role of me as a teacher or as a practitioner? Could you elaborate a little more on this? Sure. So um, as a teacher, you're teaching your students not only how to physically protect themselves, but you know, in an essence, how to, how to navigate their lives, how to live a, a good life. Now we're dealing with this pandemic. The lessons that are in what you teach can also be translated to how I handle myself in the pandemic. I understand. Uh, way before the pandemic, I thought that we can extract some meaning from what we do uh, that does not take 12 years, okay? Mm. Can we just take the extract, the magic pill of what we do and and transfer it okay because uh, the entrance point to the akban veteran uh, strata is is 12 years nobody wants to pay in 12 years hard labor nobody okay it's just like and and what is the extraction what is the most important thing that is unique to what we do and i think that one of the most one of the most important things is not just the physical thing or the sparring or anything, is equanimity. The ability to stay cool and focused, even mm -hmm. doing very, very complicated motor and mental processes. Just the ability to stay focused. And after extracting this insight, maybe it is not true, but this is what I think, we started teaching it under the mantle of detent. We created a company, okay, and the company is working together with Akban, and it just teaches emotional regulation, okay? And again, there is a business model here, but the business model is way, way bigger than ninjutsu because the entry point into the detente workshop is six hours. Why? Because it's not 11,000 techniques, it's just five, five techniques, <laughs> and you can get five techniques and and guys, you know these five techniques. You don't need six hours to understand the detente mindset. You just- I don't mean to interrupt you, Yossi, but did you just enroll Hardy and I into detente? I think you just did. No. I think we I just, just I, I think we just went past the, uh, <laughs> I think we made it past the barrier. <laughs> way, way better oh. than this. I just told you, you, because you're from the lineage of Steve, even Hayes, you were in the tent from the beginning. It's way better than what you said now. You are in the tent. Okay, it, you, you just know these feelings. And uh, and this 15 minute video that I'm so proud of, that Kuji In, Kuji Kiri for soldiers, it's just this, you look at it and say, of course, 
nothing is new. He's, I, agree, I fully agree with Yossi, I understand. And this is why this video is so good because mm. it really teaches you what you already know. And now you understand, why do I stand like this? Why do I breathe like this? Why do I do this? Okay, not Naruto style, but <laughs> what, what, what is the impact here? And this is a thing that we can teach others and it's, it's very, like a lot of the things I try to do, it's very ordered and we have a good body of knowledge and good methodology. And uh, I tell you one thing, uh, everybody should learn it and teach it. And there is no business model in this. Okay, just take the knowledge and diversify and look at it from a different perspective and, and help people because our students maybe don't need so much help because they just need to go to the dojo and train, okay? So just push yourself, students, go to the dojo and train, no matter what. But other people, not our students, they can use some help, okay? Like sure. one fourth of the adults, not only in the States, in Israel, in many places, Lebanon, everywhere, has been considering suicide. That's a mental health crisis. Okay, yeah. and if we can help, why not? And if we can make a policeman or a soldier, doesn't matter what policeman or soldier, more focused, more calm, he will shoot better when he should, he will talk politely when he should, he will be quiet when he should. We need to reteach it into the system, okay? And uh, it's a thing that we know and sport martial art already know okay we can just teach it we have the methodology we just teach it and uh, i think it's a it's a big call for me for me i feel it's like this is calling me okay and uh, and this is what this is the main thing i do now i continue teach i teach the same thing since i was 20 years old i continue teach it's not that i'm abdicating my my position no but this is my call now. And uh, I have been mm -hmm. teaching the, the Tant workshop as much as I can in the IDF, everywhere here in Israel, even outside of Israel, because uh, I think it is more important than ninjutsu. Can I say this? It's more important. Ninjutsu is well, important. This is, this is where you are in your life. So naturally, you've, you've earned the right to be able to have that perspective on your life. So naturally, you can say whatever it is that you're feeling right now. And we respect that about you for sure, Yossi. Yeah, and, and, wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> we've gone, uh, we're, we're, we are out of time, but I, I have a feeling we can make five episodes or uh, five more episodes and still have plenty of, uh, plenty of material to talk got about. A bunch, bunch more questions, uh, a, a bunch of stuff that we sort of touched on, you know, in our conversations prior. Um, I want to put you on the spot on the air. Can we do this again? Can we, can we have a, a round two? Look guys, uh, <laughs> from my point of view, I was just talking to you two guys and maybe one guy in Minnesota. I don't know how many people will see. He, he was he was watching. But but, uh, <laughs> but it's such a joy, okay? I'm I'm overjoyed just talking to you and feeling I don't want to say, you know, w words that are just like pathetic, but <laughs> such a good feeling to talk to people and to understand there are many perspectives. And everything is okay. And uh, we have a saying in Akban, okay? I'm not less of an apple if you are a good orange, okay? Because that means that Hardy can do the best Omote Gyaku there is and be much better in Randori. It's okay, I have my place and you guys have your place and everything is okay. It's not an MMA ring, it's just the world and we talk to each other and learn. And, and this learning process is a joyful process. And uh, yeah, sure, I would, I would start another conversation right now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it. Just, just let's talk again, yeah. Sounds perfect. Awesome. I'm, Thank I you so, so much, I appreciate Yossi. your time. Thanks again for uh, waking up in the middle of the night and, uh, and thanks for, for going live with us. I, I believe you were saying this is the first time you've done a, a live interview. Yeah, so really honored by that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and certainly plenty more to come. Yossi, thank you so much right. for, uh, for tuning in and spending some time with us. 
and uh, y- you have uh, you have our blessings to go back to sleep now. <laughs> Thank you, <Dave. laughs> Have a okay. great time, my friend. Thank you so much. Take care, Yossi. So anybody who's watching this after the fact, do know that we're going to put this on the Ninja Everyday YouTube channel and, um, and you can go back and review any of the material. And if you want to share this with your friends that uh, could not tune in with us, um, we'd, we'd love to have them on. Um, the, one of the oh. final things I want to say before we wrap up, uh, our friends in uh, the Boulder Quest Center, at the Boulder Quest Center, are, uh, yeah. they have a GoFundMe going on now. So if you are a, uh, a Ninja 2 practitioner, a Toshindo practitioner, uh, some of our family needs our help. Like so many martial arts schools right now, they're facing the, uh, the effects of the pandemic and the, um, you know, the effects of not having students uh, in and able to train. So uh, you can find the post for that, uh, a few posts before this interview on the Ninja Every Day, and I'll share it again after the fact. Yeah, so let's keep that moving. And uh, if you're inspired to, you know, take part in the GoFundMe, you know, do what you can uh, when you can, but also it'd be encouraging to maybe reach out and shoot them a message on uh, Facebook or any social media platform that you have and just let them know that you're thinking about them. And if there is any way that we can help, even if there's no way that we can help, at least we put the word out there that some of our friends are in need and uh, we'll be able to help them, you know, any way we can, even if it's just a couple words of encouragement. So uh, we appreciate your time on that. Awesome. Um, what do you got coming up, Hardy? Uh, we've got a full class of, a full week of classes this week, and then I'm going to try to slide to the beach for two weeks. I still should be able to do all the stuff. We've got Wi-Fi connection at the beach house, but uh, I want to get out and uh, do some surfing. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm still yeah. going to tear up my garage and uh, get some things dialed in. And uh, we'll be looking forward to participating in festival that's uh, coming up here in the next month, or maybe less. Yeah, less than a month. September from now, uh, and you're having, uh, give us the date again, because you're hosting on Zoom, uh, Mr. Norris, Kentoshi, will be yeah, on uh, uh, working with uh, Hombo. Yeah, I, uh, it's, I believe, August 27th. Uh, it's, it's we're going to go with that. Yeah, we're going to go with that for now, but it's on the Ninja Everyday Facebook page. So you can see it there. Perfect. All right. All well, right. Thank you again, Yossi, yeah. for, uh, for hanging out with us. We appreciate your time. We'll definitely be talking to you again and everyone else out there. Take care of yourselves. Keep training hard and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon.